effect. Looking at the spectral lines of a material, the individual emission lines can usually be clearly separated from each other. They appear as individual colored lines in the emission spectrum. The opposite would be the absorption lines of a material. These are perceived as individual black stripes in the colored spectrum. If the emitting material is brought into a strong magnetic field, the emission lines are split up. Instead of a single wavelength, several wavelengths are now observed. This is the so-called Zeeman effect. This effect was discovered as early as 1896 by the Dutch physicist Peter Zeeman, for which he received the Nobel Prize only six years later. To explain this, the hypothesis of electron spin was introduced in 1925. The experiment consists of a magnetic coil with a cadmium lamp in the middle. In one of the pole shoes there is a hole through which the light is guided into the optical setup. The magnetic coil is rotatably mounted so that the light of the cadmium lamp can be observed parallel or perpendicular to the magnetic field lines. The optical setup consists of two lenses, a Fabry-Perot interferometer or etalon, and optionally a linear polarization filter. In addition, a color filter can be inserted into the beam path to select specific emission lines. We use a red filter, so we only look at the red spectral line of cadmium at a wavelength of lambda equals 643.8 nanometers. The beam is focused on a camera. The interference image to be observed there is displayed on a monitor. As long as no current flows through the coil, the interference image of the camera shows several well-separated interference rings. First, the light is observed transversely to the direction of the magnetic field lines, i.e. the light is guided between the two pole shoes into the optical setup. If the current through the coil, and thus the magnetic field, is now increased, it is observed that each ring in the interference image splits into three rings. A line triplet is created. One ring remains unchanged. The other two rings are located at the same distance with a small radius further inside and a larger radius further outside. If one brings a linear polarization filter into the beam path and turns its polarization direction perpendicular to the magnetic field, only the two split rings are observed. If the polarization filter is turned parallel to the magnetic field, only the original ring is observed. So the light of the three rings is linearly polarized. Now rotate the electromagnet by 90 degrees and observe the light longitudinally, i.e. parallel to the direction of the magnetic field lines. The light is guided through the hole on the pole shoe into the optical setup. If the current through the coil, and thus the magnetic field, is now increased, it is observed that each ring in the interference image splits into two rings. This results in a line doublet. The original ring disappears, while the two new rings are equidistant from the original ring with a smaller radius further inwards and with a larger radius further outwards. If you bring a polarizing filter into the beam path and turn its polarization direction horizontally or vertically, you will notice that the light of these two rings remains unchanged. Thus, it is not linearly polarized. With a circular polarization filter, it could be shown that the light of these two rings is circularly polarized in opposite directions. Unfortunately, this cannot be shown here. The phenomenon observed here is the so-called normal Zeeman effect. This only occurs at transitions between atomic states with a total spin s equals zero. The total angular momentum j equals l plus s of a state is then a pure orbital angular momentum j equals l. Thus, the magnetic moment of the atoms is vector mu j equals mu b over h bar times vector j with Bohr's magneton mu b equals minus h bar e over 2 m e. The interaction of the magnetic moment mu j with the external magnetic field b is associated with the potential energy e pot equals minus vector mu j times vector b equals minus mu j z times b equals minus 
u b over h bar times j z times b the angular momentum component in magnetic field direction can have the following values j z equals m j times h bar with m j equals j j minus one up to minus j thus the term with the angular momentum j splits up into 2j plus 1 equidistant components with different mj values. The energy difference between adjacent components is delta E pot equals mu b times b. The overall energy levels are therefore E pot equals minus mz mu b times b. We observe the normal Zeeman effect on the red spectral line of cadmium with wavelength lambda equals 643.8 nanometers. It corresponds to the transition 1d2 with j equals 2 and s equals 0 to 1p1 with j equals 1 and s equals 0 of an electron of the fifth shell. In a magnetic field, the level 1d2 splits into 5 and the level 1p1 into 3 components with the respective distance mu b times b. In each, there are three transitions with delta mj equals minus 1, and three transitions with delta mj equals 0, and three transitions with delta mj equals plus 1. Transitions with the same delta mj emit light of the same wavelength. The light of transitions with delta mj equals minus 1 has lower energy by mu b times b. The light of transitions with delta mj equals plus 1 has higher energy by mu b times b. Polarization. The different polarizations of the emission lines can be explained by the classical picture of electrons. If an electron oscillates in a magnetic field, its motion can be broken down into three substitute electrons. Substitute electron 1 corresponds to the electron oscillation parallel to the external magnetic field. The magnetic field has no influence on this oscillation. The electron thus oscillates parallel to the magnetic field B at a constant frequency and uninfluenced by the external magnetic field. The light emitted by this electron is linearly polarized parallel to the magnetic field. The oscillation perpendicular to the magnetic field can be divided into two opposite circular oscillations by the substitute electrons 2 and 3. Since these components oscillate perpendicular to the magnetic field, they are influenced by the Lorentz force. One circular oscillation is accelerated by the magnetic field, while the other is decelerated. This results in an energy difference between the three different oscillations. Here, the energy increase of the accelerated oscillation corresponds exactly to the energy loss of the decelerated one, resulting in a symmetrical splitting of the energy levels. The light emitted by these two electrons is linearly polarized light, Perpendicular to the magnetic field, it is observed as polarized perpendicular to the B field. Parallel to the magnetic field, the two electrons emit right and left circularly polarized light. In a transverse view, light emitted by the substitute electrons 1, 2 and 3 can thus be observed. The light of electron 1 is linearly polarized, parallel to the magnetic field, that of electrons 2 and 3 is linearly polarized perpendicular to the magnetic field. In longitudinal view, only light from the substitution electrons 2 and 3 can be observed. Their light is circularly polarized in opposite directions. In the general case of the anomalous Zeeman effect, the total spin must be taken into account, in addition to the total orbital angular momentum. Due to the different Landé factors for the orbital angular momentum of GL equals 1, and for the spin of Gs equals 2, the total angular momentum and the resulting total magnetic moment are no longer antiparallel in this case. As a result, the energy levels split into several components. The size of the split is no longer the same for all levels. More lines can be seen in the transitions. Result The Zeeman effect, discovered as early as 1896, shows the splitting of atomic energy levels, or spectral lines, when exposed to an external magnetic field. The electron spin hypothesis was introduced in 1925 as an explanation.